Here we're going to look at seasonality in forecasting. And through this quick video, we will demonstrate the uh, one of the methods that we can apply seasonality uh, to our forecasting uh, to hopefully make predictions uh, that are uh, more likely to be true uh, than less likely. So what is seasonality? Let's just start by expelling a myth that seasonality is actually related to the seasons. Um, I think we use that term seasonality and, and the way that we interpret it in forecasting is really that there is some repeatable pattern to it. Now, the repeatable pattern in nature, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, we, we know those, particularly here in, in North America, because we have very distinct seasons. I know our, our winters are generally pretty cold, and our summers are pretty hot, and, and both the autumn and the spring are those transition uh, areas, depending, again, where you are in, in the continent. But you get the idea that certain things happen. And, uh, you know, if you look at seasonality, I mean, you're going to ski more in the winter. That's predictable because there's snow. You're going to swim more in the summer. That's predictable because there are, um, there's more heat, obviously, and, and the water's warmer. So it's more comfortable to be outside. And there's everything for every season. Um, but then there are some things that are still predictable. And I, I really like this example. Uh, this is a, an example of what typically happens on the days of December with the S&P uh, 500, which is uh, one of the stock markets, one of the measures of the stock markets in the U.S. And that, um, that particular measurement, you see a drop off right in mid-December. And this is almost, you know, you're talking about over, over 60 years of data, almost 70 years of data now, um, if not more than that, where we see that over time, you know, this is repeatable every year. So if you come to about the 10th of December, you can pretty much predict that, you know, by the 15th, you're going to lose maybe a point or, you know, somewhere at half a point in, in, in that nature in terms of the value of the S&P. Why? We don't know. I mean, you could make predictions why. We don't need that here. We just need to know that, hey, there's something that's repeatable and there's a better than not chance that it's gonna to continue to repeat. So I can make some assumptions based on that. So let's take a look at a typical seasonal forecast and how to do it. What I've got here is uh, some fictitious demand for a particular product, could be anything, um, over three different years. So I've got 2015, 2016, and 2017. I've also got all the months that we sold that product across, and then you know the number of units that we sold in each month. So you'll see a bit of a trend here. We're not going to graph this, but you'll see that, okay, we sell 180, you know, 100, 100. We get a little bit of a spike up in the summertime, um, and then it kind of drops back down. So there's something to, um, we sell a little bit more in June, July, and August than we do, you know, in the winter season. So maybe this is something related to warm weather. This could be something like um, soda sales, or doesn't matter what the product. Okay, so we do have some steps, and we'll take a look at how to fulfill these steps in order to come to a forecast that includes seasonality. And all we really want to do is understand that there's some months that we're going to sell, you know, lower amounts, and some months that we're going to do higher amounts. So to figure this out is is actually pretty simple and, and probably pretty logical. So let's just do one thing first. There's a couple of just basic calculations we need to understand first. And the first one is about the behavior of each month independently, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take an average, so I'm gonna use Excel to do this. I'm gonna take an average of the three years of the month of January. So what I know is that in the three years of data that I have, on average I sell 102 units in January. I'm gonna carry that all the way across and I'm gonna copy, so I'm just gonna control write that, and I'm gonna copy that same formula, so I get that for every month. So you see that you know, the lowest average month that we have here looks like February, and the highest average month looks like July. Okay, just looking at the data set very simply. And then annually, I mean, you know, for 2015, 16, and 17, Annually, you know, when you average out those three years, we sold about 1,757 units, okay? All right, now, I mean, the next step is to figure out, okay, what would be our average if, if we simply just took 
our, our deseasonalized average and said, if we spread that across all 12 months, uh, how much would that be? So it, it is quite simply, we're going to take the total that we averaged in a year and we're going to divide it by the number of months that we have. Oops, did that formula wrong. <laughs> Sorry, let me delete that. I'm going to take the, the average that we had in a year and I'm going to divide it by 12. So what this tells me is that every month, and I'll just uh, copy that across, every month, you know, if I was just to look at this purely by by the average month or, or you know, taking my 700 and 1757 and dividing it between all the months, you could say that on average every month I sell 146 units. That's true, uh, but it's not very accurate, right? I think you can see that there's better, we could be much more accurate in our statements and especially our forecasting. Because imagine, I mean, you could take that as a very simple forecast. You could say, was it last year we sold 1757 in, in terms of the number of units? That means we're going to sell 146 every month. So our sales forecast is 146. But you know, when you look at the behavior previously, you know, that's not the case because there's some months you're going to sell more than the average and some months you're going to sell less. So the trick, not a trick, but the only real thing that we need is we need to understand the relationship of what our experience has been over the months to what the very simple average is over all of the months. Okay. So that may seem complicated, but it's really quite simple. We're going to divide one into the other. So we're going to divide 102 into 146. Now we get 0.69. So 0.69, you could say that in the month of January, we sell 69% of the average monthly units. So the average monthly units, are, you know, over all the 12 months, we just keep it consistent as 146. But you know that, hey, 102 is less than 146. It actually is 69% of 146. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense that, you know, all we're doing in this index is getting a benchmark of, okay, where typically do we sell in relation to the very simple average of all the months, right? And the average of all the months is 146. In January, we only sell 102 units on average looking at the last three years, which means, you know, we're going to, we can expect to sell whatever our averages, you know, our simple averages in the future, you can expect to sell probably 69% of those units. Just as there's 69%, which is, you know, below 100% of, of the 146, you can see some months that this number is going to be higher than that. Okay. So all we're going to do is copy this number across or index because it's the same formula. And you're going to see very easily that in some months we sell more than the simple average of 146 per month. So much so that in July you sell 166%, 1.66 above the average, uh, the, the very simple average. So in, in creating a seasonalized forecast, this is the number that you really need. You really need to understand, okay, what is my experience from, from the simple average of each month? Okay. So then all we really need to do is we just need to figure out, Hey, let's make a, an estimation of, of the number of units we're going to sell by month for next year. So I could very simply say that, Hey, the DC is uh, or, or my forecast for 2018. Um, it's going to be the same. I think I'm going to sell the same number of units or I think I'm going to sell, you know, marginally a little bit more, Let, let's do a little bit more. Uh, so let's say that, um, you know, maybe we're going to sell 3% more in 2018. So for whatever reason, we believe that things are going to improve slightly. So if we take 1757 and we times it by one point, I'll do it officially so that you see what I'm doing here. 1.03, right? It's going to give us that 3% increase. Okay. So what it's saying is that, Hey, do you expect to sell 1800 units next year? All we need to do is take that and create a very simple monthly average. So we're going to take that 1809 and we're going to divide it by 12. So it's 151. So, I mean, again, you know, we're, we're using this in our calculation, but it's not really accurate to say, it just means that, you know, of the 1809 units, you know, if you average them out by month, you could expect to sell 151. 
but we're more intelligent than that. We know that in the month of January, we only typically sell 69% of that simple average. So here's, it, it is this simple. You simply take the number and you're going to times it by the index. You're going to take your, your very simple average amount, you're going to times it by your index. Um, and that is going to tell you a more accurate spread of the total number of units you would expect to sell each month. So this is consistent proportionally with what's gone on in the past, right? We know that in January, we only typically sold 69% of the very simple monthly average. So the simple monthly average for, for our new forecast is 151 and 69% of that is actually 105 units. So when you add all these up, I'm gonna add them up across the thing. It's, it's actually gonna equal the same number of units we have in our total forecast. It's just we've distributed them in a little bit more accurate way. Okay, so that is all that seasonality will do to forecasting. It says, hey, let's take a look at the experience uh, over the number of periods that we have. And that experience in relation to the simple average uh, of the period um, creates an index. We then just use that index to apply to any future um, any future prediction, and, and it gives us a way to distribute the total forecast amongst the months, consistent with the way that that's happened in the past. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I think you need to kind of go through it a little bit a few times yourself in a few examples to have it make sense. But um, as long as you can get to the idea that hey, I'm gonna I need to use an index in some way against the simple um, benchmark average for the month. You just continually use that index um, to predict what the number of units are that you're going to sell, um, assuming that the seasonality is going to remain consistent. So, you know, what you believe has happened in the past is likely to continue to happen again. Okay, so that's it. That is seasonality in forecasting.